Hello, this is Ken from the Computer Clan here today with a demo of Microsoft OneNote for the Mac. As you may know, Microsoft has had Mac apps before, but OneNote is very new to the Mac OS X platform. So I have it open right here, and I also have it open in the App Store here. This is where you can get it. It's in the App Store. It's really easy to get, and it's free. So if you're on the Mac and you finally want to try OneNote, just go to your App Store and download this app for free. Now when you open up the application, you're most likely going to be greeted with this. So Microsoft wants you to sign into a Microsoft account to keep the notebook synced. I'll just sign in with my email address and password. Once I'm signed in, all of my synced notebooks from all of my OneDrive devices are connected. And as you can see, I even have some of the old notes from OneNote on Windows, where it was even referred to SkyDrive. As you can see, that's how old this is. It's called OneDrive now. So I have some test notes that I took on my other system running Windows 8. So those will sync over, and on the Mac you will get a new like mini help manual that syncs on here as well. Let's take a look at the interface here. For starters, I like to take apps like this full screen so we can use the full screen arrow up here and now we're running this app in full screen. So the interface is all designed around note taking. That's what OneNote is, it's for taking notes, whether they just be little personal notes or maybe you're at a lecture like I am sometimes at college, you know, you need to take notes. It's nice to have a tool to do that because writing in notebooks isn't something a lot of us computer people like to do anymore. And OneNote runs on a lot of devices, and now if you have your own MacBook, you can just bring that to the lecture hall and type in OneNote. So let's take a look at how easy it is to work with a notebook in OneNote. My notebook is open here. This is the only one I have on my OneDrive. And as you can see, it's syncing. So this stays on Microsoft's OneDrive server so I can access it on any other OneNote application, even on a web browser. I'm just gonna give this tab a title here. Let's say I'm in a graphics class and we're talking about color theory, so I'll just Call this tab color theory. That's where all those notes will stay. And by default, it gives us the title page area that we can type in, the time, and the date. So I can click on that and change it if I want to, but I'll just leave it at the time it is right now while I'm doing this. So I'll type this in here. Let's just say color theory 101. I'm getting a lecture about color theory today. I better take some notes so I know what I'm doing. So I could click anywhere and just start typing, just like I could write anywhere in a notebook. It's not strict and held together in a certain ruler and formatting like on a word processor. So that's kind of the freedom with OneNote here. So I could type, let's say, introduction to the color wheel, all right? And now as you can see, these little boxes show up with the text in them, and then I can reposition them anywhere I want. I'll just keep it left aligned for now. I could also change the size. So let's say I want this to be a heading. Well, up in the ribbon interface, just like on the ribbon interface for Office, it's collapsible, you have all of your tools, just like what the ribbon is known for. And right here we have headings, so we can scroll through these different headings, or we can click this popover and it will give us an entire list of headings. This is a pretty important thing, it's kind of the title of the page here, aside from this up here, I want this to be seen, so I'll say heading 2, so now it automatically formats like that. So now that I have my header, I can actually click here and expand the box and take some notes. So let's say the cover wheel is designed to show different hues, colon, and then we could make a little list. We could say primary, secondary, and complementary. Okay, so now let's say we have our little list. Maybe we wanna highlight that and maybe make some bullets. So we just click the bullet button up here, or we can number it, either one you want. So let's say I'm doing a project just about complementary colors, and I want to remember that. I could maybe just do a little highlight here, say complementary, I need to remember that, and click the little highlighter and then it highlights it for me. And if I click this arrow next to the highlighter, I could even choose other colors. All right, so complimentary is highlighted. That's good to know. I can remember that now. So let's say I am working on that research paper and I'll just tab down a little bit and say, okay, I have an assignment. All right, it's a paper about complementary colors. All right. And let's say it's due, and I could just type due, and I don't need to type in a date necessarily because I can have it automatically format a date for me. So if I go to the insert tab up here, I could say date, and it will put in the current date, but let's say the paper is due on the 19th. So all I had to do was 
change a number instead of typing the whole thing. It's just a time saver if you're typing really quickly. So then maybe I can select that, go back to my home tab and bold that just so I don't forget it. And there are keyboard shortcuts, so don't worry. You can do command U for underline, command B for bold, command I for italicize, and you also have command L for left alignment and command R for right alignment. So little time savers like that are nice to know. So now let's say I have that bold. Okay, I got my assignment. Let's add a little to-do tag. So up here, I can actually just click this little checkbox and it gives me a little checkbox right here. I can click it when I'm done and I'm not done and I might procrastinate so that might not ever get clicked, but you get the idea. So when you do your assignment, you can click that and be like, am I done? Yes, I am, so that's good. So then I can come down and maybe take some more notes or hey, let's get graphical. A picture is worth a thousand words, right? So let's go to the insert tab, go to picture, and let's say I have this color wheel I actually want to insert. So I can choose that and just, it puts it right there. Very simple. Or if I don't want it in alignment with these notes, hey, we have freedom. Let's just drag this out. So now we can position this anywhere and drag the handles to resize it and just drag it anywhere we want. So now we have our assignment with our checkbox, a highlight, a bullet list, some basic notes, a header, date, and title. And that was pretty quick to do. And once you do this a couple of times, you can really get the hang of this. So let's say I'm taking some more notes now. Let's say we have, let's go back to the home tab here. Let's say we're gonna do an intro to RGB, right? And we can select this now and say, okay, this is another heading. So I'm gonna go back and say heading two, just to keep it consistent with the heading I have selected up here. Okay, so now we have some notes going on and we have the second heading that we want to type in now. Let's take a look at some tags here. Now already we use the to-do tag, which is a pretty important one, but there's plenty of other tags in here. You can swipe through them with multi-touch gestures or you can click the arrows. So that's a nice thing about the ribbon. It's nice and compact, but if you want to see them all at once, just click this little tab here and it gives you a popover, just like with the headings over here. It's a nice part of the interface. So I could see them all. I could make a note of a book to read, so I can put a little book icon in there, or maybe a source for an article, music to listen to, movie to see. I can just put all these little tags in here. Maybe I have a question, like, I could just say this right here, save this for later. What does this mean? So I could be like, okay, I have a question that I'll ask at the next lecture. What does this mean? Maybe we didn't get to what RGB means in this lecture today, so I need to find out later. Or I could say, Oh, this is important, ask about CMYK. So I could just put a little star in there, just little graphics to grab your attention. So that's the little tag interface there. It's pretty simple to use. Just select some text you wanna annotate with a tag and simply click the buttons, just like we did up here with this checkbox. So now we have some more notes going on. Let's get some more visuals in here. We'll go to insert, picture, and maybe we'll choose this RGB picture here. So now we have a representation of how the colors mix. So once again, I can freely position that. And it's just nice to have visuals in your notes because, well, first of all, it's good to look at your notes, but it's also good to have some pictures because it just helps with visualizing things, especially when it comes to color theory. It's nice to see something like this. In the Home tab, as you may have noticed, you also have all of your font options, just like in other Microsoft Office apps. And your font sizes, so don't worry, that's all still in there, no problem. Okay, so let's say we're done for the day. We're good to go. Do we save changes or anything? No, it all stays synced for you. You never need to worry about saving changes. But I will show you under the file menu, there is a button to force the syncing. So you know how sometimes you press command S to save? Well, command S here is to sync and it will just stay on your cloud. As you can see the little icons right there to let you know this is syncing. You're good to go. You don't need to worry. So now let's say we're done with our notes for the day but maybe we need to share them with somebody. Well, this little share button up in the right here gives you some options. This popover provides you with an option to email the page as a PDF. PDFs can be opened on just about any device because it's a pretty open standard. There's not really a lot of compatibility issues there. But another interesting option is you can share a link. And what this does is it gives you a web address for people to go to in their web browser. Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari, etc., And they can use the OneNote web app to view or edit documents without even having OneNote installed on their computer. The view only mode locks the document down. So if you share it with somebody, they can look at it, but they can't change it. But let's say you're working on a collaborative note taking notebook here and you need other friends of yours to help you out with notes. Well, then you can go to view and edit. So when you send them the link, they can make changes. So let's take a look at that. I'll say view and edit, and it will say load sharing link. 
So we'll give that a couple seconds. And now this address can be taken and pasted into a web browser. I can email it to someone, but since I'm just testing it on my own computer, I'll just say copy link. So now if I go to a web browser, let's say Firefox, so I just pasted the link in my URL bar up here, and now as you can see, I have all of the OneNote notebook stuff that I shared with myself, but this can work with other people. Does this look familiar? This is the stuff we were just looking at on the Mac app, but now it's running in a web browser with the OneNote online. And I can even click Edit in Browser, and now I can make changes. All this stuff is editable. As you can see, checkboxes, graphics, everything. And I could even get all my tools in a similar ribbon-like interface like what we were using on the Mac app. So that's pretty convenient. I'm just gonna close out of Firefox now and go back to my app here. And as you can see, right here, it even says a guest modified this document. It's letting me know there was a change made on the cloud by somebody else. So that is a quick look at Microsoft OneNote for the Mac. Once again, this is in the Mac App Store. It is free. Go give it a shot. I'm sure you will like it. If you have any questions or suggestions or you want to share your own OneNote experience on any platform, just let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe to stay in touch with more Real Deal videos and click that like button if you liked the video. Also, check out our largest upcoming project to date. It's coming to Indiegogo, so we cannot wait to see your awesome support. And if you want to see more content from us or apply for a YouTube partnership, visit us on our other great websites.